is going to be a clean sweep now go particularly in the north part of bharat that this alliance is going to benefit bjp more than nitish someone calling him fascist someone calling him dictator and god knows what uh, he is he is work for at in one the politicians in the south do not want people to understand what uh, the national leaders are speaking from delhi so i do believe that annabalai has cashed up a lot north and south is for direction when you are lost okay now each one of us are citizens of bharat the prime minister and the government is totally aware of what kind of atrocities are going on they do have sympathy but they want permanent solution bigger role in national politics i think that will be the end of this north south big narrative that is going around in in the south we have seen brutal physical attacks on leaders similarly what we see in bangkok tamil nadu annamala has worked excellent so Namaste and a very warm welcome to the Nashtas Padasi. Uh, this is Intellectual Exchange with Mr. Dharmendra Agarwal. In today's episode of the Intellectual Exchange, we are uh, joined by our very own Ankit Shapt, Dr. Ankit Shapt. Um, uh, he needs no introduction actually. So let us uh, straight away go into the subjects, and we have a lot uh, to discuss with uh, Mr. Shapt. Uh, Namaste, Mr. Shapt. Thank you, thank you for uh, giving your wonderful time, and uh, so it's good to see you in your uh, in your town actually. So. Uh, so welcome to the National Madrasi, and I have a lot and wide range of topics to be discussed with you actually. And uh, so we can divide it into two parts actually. So one is before twenty twenty four elections, and the next thing is like after twenty four twenty twenty four elections because that uh, this is the uh, time or period in which Bharat is putting its uh, values in front of the world and putting itself in front of the world actually. So we will discuss that uh, both of them in detail actually. So Shah. Uh, Let me ask you, like, what are your numbers? Because Modi is saying that three seventy four hundred, Aadmi Bar four hundred par. Like, okay, so but we know, like, twenty nineteen was so serious, and uh, uh, BJP took uh, straight away won its second term after nearly after thirty years, if I'm not wrong, and with a huge majority of three hundred and three. But three seventy or four hundred, it's nearly like in sixty uh, seven seats and hundred seats plus for the twenty twenty four. it is possible we will next discuss that where are these where will be these seats coming from we'll discuss that in detail but 370 or 400 will that be possible mr shah um first of all thank you for being here and always a pleasure to talk to a madrasi chennai being my birthplace exactly um i'm not a political like encephalologist or a seeds uh, exactly. predictor but your prediction never goes wrong <laughs> <laughs> uh well uh, one and a half years back i had set 350 plus seats for the bjp and i was waiting to see like how much are they uh, going to share seats with the nda within the nda uh, coalition and i think looking at how it is going about looks like 350 plus for bjp is a possible Okay, three fifty plus for the BJP. It's the same prediction, no change. So okay, okay, what a good. See, but India, like before, like twenty nineteen, India was much stronger. We can see that BJP is still stronger. BJP. Let's let's separate NDA and BJP, and we will discuss that in detail. NDA in twenty nineteen was much stronger. Let's say GDU was at 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 that phase, it was very stronger, and I think it lost only one seat in uh, Bihar in that uh, in the coalition. And uh, Shiv Sena was there. That uh, uh, full Shiv Sena, Udav Thakre, if not Shiv, at at the time there was no camps. But uh, NCP additionally were, is there now in the NDA. So and uh, in South, uh, yeah, ADFK is also not there. 
and we'll talk about south especially uh, because like we both have been analyzing uh, the south very closer uh, but let's finish north first of all but uh, last time in up it was around 63 seats so would this you time it will be much more okay would you think that it will the, the scale will go up because rld is also in the uh, it go higher much higher okay because you already know the ram mandir way of that exactly it exactly. has been and the development work not just ram mandir the development work because of yogi modi joint engine model that uh, uttar pradesh has been progressing so well in fact uh, it is soon going to compete with the top 5 states uh, in the country okay. in terms of productivity and economy so we are seeing ayodhya itself crossing 1 billion dollar economy by the end of this decade no us it will completely keep on expanding its projects after projects example right i'll i'll deal with the economic part in the uh, second part that is how bharat is uh, managing itself in the world so uh, first we will focus on this elections and uh, so what is what is your uh, uh, prediction on bihar uh, shaj because uh, see uh, at the time we speak okay india is very powerful the we, we should not omit that the point that rjd is also very powerful let's Let's say Congress doesn't have any base over there, but RJD seems to be very powerful, and he's also taking some yatras. They just be Yadav is also taking some yatras, I think. So, what is the take? Will it be a, a tough competition, or will be will it be a cakewalk for the NDA over there? Well, it looks like if you split NDA between uh, Nitish Kumar and the BJP, this two as an alliance, uh, you might see that the seats which the Nitish Kumar Kumar used to win, that might shift. more towards bjp okay okay that chunk of votes okay so together as an alliance in nda i think it's going to be a win win combination okay um rjd is certainly a big force exactly. in the state uh and that's going to be the uh, tight fight okay. over there in the state okay but i do believe that this alliance is going to benefit bjp more than nitish kumar no okay 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 so uh, especially up uh, i just want to be having a, a clear cut numbers because see when you are predicting something it it actually comes true because i'm a micro analyst i just want to go deep and just get your numbers uh, shaji see when rld is inside the nda many of them gave that 80 of 80 is possible except one or two like 70 70 or less no bc bsp is now no more yeah no more uh, and viable force over there yeah yeah but when rld is into the uh, uh, fold of nda many of them predicted that 75 plus is possible out of 80 so what is your take on that i just want to be very particular with the numbers <laughs> well uh, i believe it can go about 70 for sure okay 70 for sure okay so certainly more than what 63 no okay the previous one okay but it can go about sir okay 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 because this the state requires yogi ji for a longer term uh 10 more years for sure because that uttar pradesh model has to come out uh and as you are seeing rajnath singh talking about fourth term of the prime minister of there not even the third the fourth <laughs> they they are looking so forward <laughs> so if you are saying fourth term for the uh, prime minister which is why when uh, you know some of the twitter artists when they start discussing the succession plan of the prime minister i have an objection i say i mean the states need these leaders at least for some years until to come up to that level of development but and even otherwise from the angle of security because i've been observing politics particularly in the south and politics particularly in the west bengal side as I, i believe uh i have security concerns upon with our yeah. leaders sure so, we should discuss that yeah yeah so i do not want hmm. uh people propagating leaders ahead of time succession after the prime minister got to got to got to got i by by certainly agree with you shaji let's uh, firstly first uh, discuss the numbers So I think you are the one who gave all the three states for the BJP because uh, I'm the many, only one. Yeah, <laughs> many were in doubt about the Chhattisgarh. Yeah, and uh, so uh, I think you give uh, you also give uh, that uh, BJP will win massive in uh, Madhya Pradesh. I'm not wrong. We also did a, a podcast at that time. <laughs> But uh, uh, how did it become possible? Because see, now 2019 or uh, in in Madhya Pradesh, 
Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. All the three states, BJP were the result. And BJP lo- lost badly in Chhattisgarh and uh, mm-hmm. even in Rajasthan as well. Uh, but they certainly, they are, they are able to overcome and they lost only one seat in uh, Lok Sabha. But now the state is set, uh, completely set. Uh, Chhattisgarh, they are having an absent majority. And uh, in Madhya Pradesh, they are having a huge, huge majority. Same wise in Rajasthan as well. And all these are three new phases as uh, as uh, nobody could have predicted. So all these uh, three would have been a new phases. What are your numbers? There will be a, again a clean sweep as happened in 2019 for all these three states. It's going to be a clean sweep. No, okay. Particularly in the north part of Bharat. No, okay. Because you see Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, okay. Rajasthan, right? These are the state Uttar Pradesh. These are clean sweep states. I mean, they would cross 150, 200 with just with the northern part of the country, right? Um, I do believe because you raised this point because these three states you you find it found it surprising that I said they will win. Particularly you mentioned Madhya Pradesh. I believe that the BJP as a party is very clever in terms of what I would say a tactical withdrawal. What do I mean by tactical withdrawal? When Shivraj Singh was portrayed as not going to be the chief minister candidate, not officially being declared as a chief minister candidate. That massively benefited his Pratim Pradesh. So it was a tactical withdrawal for the time being. Whereas you know the previous elections, he was clearly shown as the, as the chief minister candidate. So the entire anti-incumbency which gathered uh, turned into a positive for the party. As soon as you said that, no, we are not clearly giving the chief minister candidate. No. So I think that worked really well for the BJP. Similarly, this was asked to me on 22nd January 2024, which I see is our civilizational independence day. Um, I was asked why the BJP ministers are absent okay. on that event. Okay. I said, this is the same tactical withdrawal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you see uh, the Home Minister explaining to that uh, media guy, why, why was it a BJP event? There wasn't any BJP leader in the event. So this allegation of the opposition party, they, they, I think in terms of vision, he's a far, far ahead visionary uh, kind of leaders, the Modi Shah Doho, compared to any of the opposition leaders. They, they, can, they can pursue what all allegations are going to come, okay, and they can plan it out way ahead of time. Okay, got it. So, so tactical withdrawals are required sometimes. It happened in Gujarat as well. Oh, got it. We didn't have CM candidate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I just want to add one more question, here, since you mentioned uh, 22nd January. So did the opposition uh, lost its uh, wonderful opportunity on the 22nd January because um, it had an opportunity to attend the Pran Pradishta and the uh, they could have scored uh, somewhere to some extent, but they lost an opportunity. Do you think that they lost an opportunity? Well, what would you do when you don't have any vision for the country? So, the opposition is totally lost in terms of vision. Uh, you never heard of them giving any kind of uh, plans for Bharat in any of their speeches. So, I don't think how you can revive the opposition with this kind of positioning which they've been continuously been taking. So they have been officially rejected the existence of Bhagwan Ram officially in the court of law. Now with what face would have they attended that event? So uh, I think they have completely lost touch with the ground realities of this country. Particularly uh, with the concept of secularism, they are completely lost about what dharma means, what religion or foreign origin means, what is the concept of a convert. I think these are the, the basic concepts which now laymen understand, but these parties are probably not even interested in uh, knowing uh, what their constituencies demand of them. No, they got it, got it, got it. So, uh, Shaji, let's come to Gujarat especially, with the six out of conditions. I think. Uh, um, right from uh, 2004, like uh, Gujarat has been uh, giving a very good mandate for the BJP. And uh, so PM uh, stood in uh, Badudra in the year 2014 and uh, then he had uh, become a pure uh, <laughs> UP Vasi and uh, he is contesting from the Varanasi. But what is the 
uh, magic behind uh, uh, the numbers because see, uh, especially when it is giving a clean sweep mandate um, for the BJP. In, now, when the state assembly elections also, it, it has given a clean sweep, uh, sweep, uh, sweep uh, mandate, I, I would say, like it has crossed upon 146 with the uh, CM uh, Bhupendra Bhai Patel. So what, what, what's the magic that BJP is doing in Gujarat? No. And we can see that in the neighboring state of Madhya Pradesh and uh, we, could, we could see that uh, in some other state as well. Um, so if UP goes in the same way, it can become another Gujarat as well. So what um, uh, what is the Gujarat model? Because like, see, and uh, uh, year after year when the government is repeating or when the party is in power for a very long time, people feel that anti-incumbency kind of a mandate or the anti-incumbency kind of a mindset. But when we see Gujarat, it's like kind of a pro, uh, like uh, what, uh, it, it, what we can say is a pro incumbency which is happening in Gujarat. How do you explain that and how it is happening? Well, you will have to dig out the history of the state first. So, uh, in the previous century, we had consistently uh, Congress government come into power for several years. And during that regime, what Gujarat had experienced, in fact, I would say when I was a kid, uh, outside my society, you will have grooming gangs standing outside. Okay, some uh, Aslam by, some this by, and that by. Um, post-2001 that we had this governance coming in, we had a huge change in terms of the security apparatus, uh, the development apparatus for sure. Uh, and more than that, the benefit of consistency of policies. Because time and again, as you select the same party in power, uh, the policies maintain consistency. And when the trade policy, the security policy uh, maintains consistency, you can attract as much investment from outside as you think of. Now, this is the Gujarat model or understanding of benefit which the people of the state, including the Muslim community, understands it so well mm. that without maintaining this kind of consistency, you would not have inflows of money coming in and in these proportions um, and the prime minister himself has been uh, keeping an eye from Delhi uh, point to point to the ground to see to it that all the projects complete over time uh, so that has been an additional benefit besides uh, the state government that you have um, when the global investors see this kind of consistency and the people of Gujarat could grow I mean, if you look at Rajasthan, every every five years, you know, they change government. Something similar to Tamil Nadu. Yeah, exactly. every five years they've been changing. Now, what happens with the change in government is the consistency in policies is lost. And when you don't have consistency in policies, why would the investor invest for the long term? Because understand, an economic engine always arrives after he has the security of water supply electricity supply, skilled labor supply, land supply, and also the finance. Without that, no investor is coming to your place. Okay, so when you see some of these states uh, falling in terms of finances, I mean, you, the opposition has this strategy. I mean, wherever they go, they simply bankrupt the state, declaring the free lease. So this is what happens. If you don't have consistency in quality, then you are losing out economically completely and also in terms of security. Why would people of Gujarat would want that? When they have seen the goodies, <laughs> why would they want to go back to those old days when uh, every every third day there used to be a random stabbing in Antabad, the city? Okay. Every third day. You don't want to go back to those days. Okay. Right? So that's the mandate which people have given to the PJP. I'm telling you, all 26 seats. Okay. So that has been repeated for the past two elections. <laughs> I'm telling you, because the Muslim community also realizes today, and the way the Prime Minister has worked even at the national level, uh, from that triple talaq and uh, this kind of, uh, you know, fundamentalist policies, he is liberating the Muslim movement. I mean, where you're going to get a Prime Minister who's doing so much for the Muslim community? And yet he is being attacked with I don't know what kind of allegations, someone calling him fascist, someone calling him dictator and God knows what. Uh, 
So he's, he is work for everyone without differentiating anybody, without dissecting the population. Uh, and look at the politics of the opposition. They've been uh, playing the politics of division all the time, north, south, caste discrimination. That's all they got. They have no vision other than that. So, uh, uh, Shaji, uh, do you think that, since you raised that question, the north-south uh, divide is still a political uh, play card? Because see, uh, often, uh, I, I experience a lot of uh, debates uh, uh, when I hear this word north-south divide. Because, see, DMK used this uh, term card or this play card every time. Uh, I've become, so we will separately discuss coming out. But uh, do you st still think that will it be a political message to the BJP? Because uh, they still think that the BJP is a northern party and they still think that the BJP can't uh, hold, have a hold in uh, South. So what is your take on that, uh, Shaji? Well, I think this notion that BJP would not have a hold in South, I think it's misplaced. Um, this entire politics of opposition playing with Hindi language in particular, and I have personally experienced this because as kids, when we used to go for vacation to uncle's home in Chennai, I faced this, my cousins telling me, well, this time we don't have Hindi in the syllabus. <laughs> After a few years, Hindi has come back in the syllabus. So uh, when we used to hear that, uh, it immediately used to strike to me that probably the politicians in the South do not want people to understand what uh, the national leaders are speaking from Delhi. Perhaps this is what the incentive is to play this North-South divide. So I do believe that Annamalai has catched up a lot on ground and I won't be surprised if you have uh, a good, I mean at least a good opening. We will discuss uh, Tamil Nadu especially. Yeah. And uh, Shaji, let's come to Maharashtra. And uh, where, uh, in terms of north-south divide, I want to give this clarification to the viewers that north and south is for direction when you are lost. Okay. Uh, each one of us are citizens of Bharat. We are not citizens of the state. And, and let me be very clear uh, in no uncertain terms that when the Delimitation Commission will come up with its recommendations, and it will go into force. We will be prepared for changes in the borders. Might as well see some union territories coming up in some states. We don't know. Okay? okay? But yeah. I'm just saying that... Do you, do you have some any predictions? Because uh, <laughs> do you have any predictions on this? No, uh, I, uh, what I've already predicted is a gift city okay. which has a chance of becoming a union territory. Yeah. Particularly because it would have a global role to play. Yeah. Uh, I mean, viewers need to understand that Bharat's uh, geopolitical heft is going to increase massively. So you can't, uh, uh, you know, think within a box and say, no, no, my language, my country, my state, my city, that kind of, I mean, that time of, that kind of protectionism is gone. Okay. The world is seeking you. Now you cannot lock yourself in a room when the world is trying to search you. Okay. So we should tap this opportunity. Time has come. Our geopolitical responsibilities are going to increase. And if that means more than the seats that are currently in the Lok Sabha with the Delimitation Commission, if some states have to face change in borders, then so be it. And people have to understand that we are citizen, as I said, citizen of Bharat, not of the state. Now this politics of North and South divide, my understanding, and I... <laughs> I have a, <laughs> a, a soft touch for the city of Chennai as well. So I would say that when Chennai will have Tamil Nadu as a state, will have a bigger role in national politics, I think that will be the end of this North-South fake okay. narrative that is going around. Got it, got it, got it. We'll come back to the uh, Tamil Nadu politics. But Maharashtra. I wonder why English is not a foreign language and why Hindi, <laughs> why Hindi is. And uh, so that uh, <laughs> the politician needs to answer. But uh, Maharashtra, uh, 48 seats and uh, I'll come to West Bengal since you mentioned the security angle as well. But Maharashtra seems to be a very crucial state. 
and it has given a greater mandate for the last two elections and uh, it is, I think it is 40 plus for the past two elections. So, would you expect a clean sweep this time because uh, Sharad Pawar, I mean, Ajit Pawar is uh, with the NDA and uh, Eknath Shinde, well, uh, both the parties, like I would say, Shiv Sena and the NCP are with the BJP. So, would you expect a clean sweep or is there a chance for the opposition in the uh, Maharashtra, state of Maharashtra? Because all of the opinion polls which uh, access my India today and the other polls are giving only 20 to 26. They already started clean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, uh, they have given a seat, number of seats and the vote percentage also. But uh, uh, would you vary in this? Because 20 to 26 is the maximum they have given for the NDA. That is for the three parties from the total 48. So uh, 20 to 26 seats are their numbers. Uh, but in the last two elections, it has been very massive, 40 plus or 42 plus, if I'm not wrong. What is uh, your uh, numbers or what is your opinion on the Maharashtra call? Because when I talk to several Maharashtra politicians, they say that uh, uh, this alliance is uh, based on the emotions. Because I'm, this is the alliance in which people of Maharashtra wants. Because uh, the growth is what they expected. And they, 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 uh, they say uh, like many reasons for that. They are very positive that the alliance will win. What is your take on that? Well, in terms of Maharashtra state politics, I have no clue. I mean, who is inside and who is outside. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, half the party is inside Shiv Sena. The other half... Now, by whatever name that you call it. Uh, similarly, with the NCP, half is inside, the other half, whatever name you call it. So, uh, I think with this kind of a mix that they are going, um, if, if BJP is going to take, go for more seats, fighting more seats, then I think that will be very beneficial for the BJP. Okay. With, with this kind of confusion that is going around. Okay. So the voters are going to see where the stability is going to come from and that is BJP. Yeah. Okay. So certainly more than the 50 percent, 50% seats, certainly more than uh, the number of seats that BJP fights, more than 50 percent there would win. Got it, got it, got it. So many of the political pundits uh, say that uh, the career of Devendra Fadnavis is, uh, is not uh, visible or it's not very clear. And uh, it... Uh, in state politics? In state politics, especially in state politics, first of all. Because, see, uh, when Ethnad Shinde became the chief minister, many told that, uh, okay, this could not have happened because, like, uh, for all these years, uh, the Maratha politics have been very dominant. And uh, even I have uh, I've spoken with several uh, uh, Maharashtra uh, political pundits. So they have they have been saying this thing. So, what is your view on uh, Sri Devendra Fadnavis ji? And uh, he has been serving as a deputy prime minister right now. I mean, deputy chief minister right now. Uh, so, uh, will he have a? Uh, I mean, like, will he have a future in the state politics? Because uh, one side Ajit Pawar, one side Eknath Shinde, and in, in middle of all these things, uh, Devendra Fadnavis is getting struggled. And at one time, Shaji, you would remember that he has been portrayed as a future prime ministerial candidate and to some extent when he was uh, having his first term, like. Between 14 to 19, he was so soft cornered and he was like portrayed as a okay, like a very uh, future prime ministerial candidate. So what before Yogi, I would say, like uh, before Yogi's. Uh, Much before Yogi Ji. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, what is uh, your take on that, uh, Shaji? Because, like, uh, and many are saying that uh, uh, Patnavis uh, doesn't have any future in the state politics itself. Because I don't know, like, uh, because we have been seeing his constant efforts on the ground, on the party and every other thing. What is your take on that? Well, you just said Deputy Prime Minister instead of Deputy <laughs> Chief Minister. Uh, so, maybe who knows. But I would, I would uh, look at him as certainly a promising leader. Um, whether he gets the responsibility for the state or some position at the center. There could be chances that he might get a Lok Sabha ticket this time. Okay. We don't know. Okay. But there are good chances. Now, why would I say that there are good chances? Because one, uh, the Prime Minister is clear about grooming the next uh, Jedi Nahus. You're already seeing Anamalai, you're seeing Yogiji, uh, Himanta Biswa, so many leaders. Um, they would ideally be wanting to, while they are present and running the governance, uh, the next lineup to uh, learn a lot of stuff. So I do 
I do think that there is a good chance uh, in the center. Now, it is also about, I mean, uh, it's the party works democratically. So, you know, the, he would also have to give inputs. I mean, because if you're going in the center, then you have to, uh, you need to have some alternatives at the state level as well in terms of leadership. Now, I see one distinct feature with Devinderji. Um, and that is, he's been the second state visit in YT by the country of Japan. Yeah, recently he has visited, I think. Uh, yeah. State yeah. visit. Uh, Previously, it was Prime Minister Modi. Okay. Okay. This is something very distinct about him. I, and I do understand that there's a bullet train project in the state which where Japan is Japanese investment is uh, certainly in the picture, but it was a state visit in white. What is a I mean a regular visit by a chief minister of some state. So I do see a distinct feature there. Uh, and at a very young age, he has been taking up the ladders uh, position uh, up through the cutters. Exactly. Uh, so he does have a good potential as well. Uh, now, in terms of a long-term role, certainly in the second lineup of leaders, whom we all know, they are many. Got, 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 got. So you have mentioned the security angle, which is uh, which is a point which is need to be discussed in detail as well. So what are the area of concerns do you think in which we need to be very clear in the security angle? Because uh, you mentioned South as well. So and what are the other uh, angles? Like uh, we have uh, North and we have border, bordering states of Punjab and we have bordering states of Kashmir as well. And what are the other aspects which uh, you think that we should be very clear and we should be moving ahead in the, in the security angle, charge? Well, um, in terms of politics, which what I was trying to mention is uh, in, in the South, we have seen brutal physical attacks on leaders. Similarly, what we see in Bengal, uh, which is why I'm a bit concerned about uh, people, masses projecting someone as a next uh, prime ministerial candidate or something like that. Because my understanding is let let there be multiple lineup of leaders. Let them work a little bit on in the state as well. Uh, and certainly, if if the prime minister thinks that they need growing at the center directly, then that also is an option. But uh, I am really concerned about the security of these leaders. No, because do understand that as your geopolitical role increases, uh, there will be elements who are who are evil and eyeing your second lineup okay and, and the local politics certainly already that it is brutal as i have seen physical attacks on leaders i mean south has that history i mean even jayalalitha ji attacked uh, rajiv gandhi was rajiv gandhi was killed killed there so uh, and even kerala Mm. Kerala has this constant attacks on the uh, cadres. Yeah. So uh, I'm really concerned about the security, which is why I say don't hype them up so much that you are giving <laughs> their address to the enemies. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, I'll just come to West Bengal. So what's the narrative right now? Because Sandesh Kani is happening. And uh, so <laughs> at, uh, I can see that the one state where uh, Unrest is happening every time, mm. be it local body elections, be it state elections or be it uh, some other protest like uh, there has been unrest which is happening all the time and uh, cars have been attacked, people have been attacked to some extent. It's a gone case. Okay. It's a gone case and there's no hope with the state government. So ultimately my understanding is that you will have to impose a president rule uh, any point in time. Mm. Because the situation is only really going to go worse from here. Okay. You already seen that from first March you will have the CA notified. Okay, okay? Uh, just news has come that there are about seventeen lakh of fake voter IDs voters. Uh, that the list that damn much is submitted by the BJP leadership, local okay. leadership. I think. I think the state government cannot function. Okay. at all. Okay. 
because uh, I, and I think that's the president. Uh, I attacked the president as well and said, uh, whoever those in charge of governance, they are accountable for the security and the sanctity of this nation. And you have to take this step, whatever that is necessary, because this cannot go on further. I mean, the state has completely uh, gone into this thing underground. I mean, whatever can happen with anybody mm -hmm. in that state, mm -hmm. even even the central teams that are going to investigate or even know what is going on, they are being, they are being attacked. So I mean, this this is like uh, a super state within the country taking over the governance uh, and running a parallel leadership which is not even accountable to the chief minister herself probably because for this level of chaos probably the chief minister also has lost all control this is what it looks like but even if she wanted to control today i doubt she can this is a position the state has gone to so uh, bengal needs uh, an icu <laughs> this thing and she herself has pushed the dead body to the ICU. So uh, it's just a matter of time when the action comes. Okay. So well, did Mamta Banerjee push herself to the uh, to that situation because she was uh, once a phase of the opposition, we can say. Like once she upon was, a time, yeah, she used she to was be uniting all these uh, opposition and leaders like uh, pre 2019 or after 2019 also. She was there as a phase of the opposition and she was she has uh, given that push as well. So did Mamta Banerjee push herself to some extent because she today in a situation that she we, we can't say that uh, uh, TMC will win all these uh, 42 seats if I'm not wrong, 42 is the number of the Bengal and uh, so at one point of a time there was uh, TMC which won all the 35, 36, uh, 36 out of the 42 and it was like third or fourth largest party in India as well. So what what happened? Like where did Mamta Banerjee went wrong, or it is the Mamta Banerjee uh, which uh, they can't uh, uh, unite against the BJP? What is what went wrong with the West Bengal politics, Shaji? Well, I mean you'll have to go back a little bit to a history because uh, the state has multi has had accumulation of multiple problems. Uh, the problems began as soon as the Britishers selected Kolkata. Uh, the Podrilok syndrome is what you call it. Mm -hmm. The English language imposition where that was probably the only city or the state which had access to English language and those textbooks and stuff like that compared to the rest of Bharat, right, at the time of colonization. Mm -hmm. And then there was a wave of leftism as we all know. And left is good at what? Left is good at opening up the borders. That's all it knows. Okay, so it just opens the borders. Uh, people come in and then they take over the rule from the left. That is exactly what happened with uh, Mamta Banerjee's rule coming in. And uh, they just finish up the left. That is what also happened. Now that that left cadre has mixed up with the goons of TMC themselves. Uh, and now they're just spreading this Islamic uh, kind of an identity all across the jihad calls and stuff like that. So... Uh, there was also a problem in terms of uh, extreme feminism in the state. Uh, as I said, it's an accumulation of multiple things. So even if you look at the festivals, uh, Durga Puja and those festivals which are purely feminine in nature and where the lady is killing the Asura men. Okay, now I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying the focus is on those kind of festivals. That kind of ultra-feminist environment within the home as well, where um, the guy has to speak silently in a hush-hush tone. There's a kind of dominance. Now, in terms of security, uh, if I'm to give you a, uh, an analogy, if, if Venus is going to lead Mars, then security is gone. Okay. This is what happened with the state in terms of ultra feminism. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and this, you get an example. Got it, got it. I got it. I got okay. It. So, the state has accumulation of multiple problems. Now that jihad has come, I mean, I had this debate oh. about two years back with a Bengali group. Okay. Uh, I read that entire Bengali group. I said, yeah, if you're going to have tough times, you have to leave the state ultimately. This is how it goes. 
they were in total disbelief. Uh, and when I pushed them a little, the answer came from the other side that if, uh, if adopting Islam is going to secure their life, then this is Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest. Okay. This was the argument I got. Okay. I am like, I'm giving up on this thing. <laughs> if this is Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest, then uh, I mean, what would you argue with this guys? Any book? I got it, I got it, I got it. Right? So it's going to require a big operation. Okay. And if maybe that requires a Kashmir like um, dissection of geography, then then there will be oh. like well, what are what will be the plans of Bohisha uh, because see uh, last time they won around 18 seats in the Lok Sabha and around 77 seats in the assembly as well. There, there was a huge competition and uh, and as I said, the unrest happens in every election. We can mm -hmm. see that and uh, after that killings happen. Even after with that. the EVM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and supposedly EVM not supposed to have this kind of chaos. <laughs> so every every time um, it used to uh, happen in a large scale actually. So uh, and uh, as you said, like the survival of the fittest. So what will be the central government's uh, thought for the state of Islamabad? See, it is not that uh, once in a year it happens. Like it is happening continuously. I think, I think uh, and I have been seeing a lot of criticism from people that, oh, why not the action, still not action being taken? So let me explain how the Moti Shah duo works. I've seen their Gujarat rule for this many years. They work on the root costs. They don't work on the symptoms. Okay. Now, say for example, there was uh, this Shine Bag protest. Now, you might say that this much you can't do. I mean, why can't you stop this? Now, it is very easy to say this. I mean, you can send uh, 100 police officers. You can make that Shine Bag wrap up immediately. But that is only working on the symptom. Who's going to work on the root cause? Because the Prime Minister's vision is the next generation should not face a similar problem again. So when you are working on the root cause, which what we can say like Ayurvedic treatment, there is going to be patience and pain. Patience along with pain, temporary pain. But then it works on the root cause. So and then Prime Minister has been clear uh, multiple times now. I mean, I've been speaking for three years now, but the Prime Minister this time Particularly revealing that I first select the endpoint, then work back what needs to be done to it. So if that action has to come on Bengal, he's not going to just take action. He wants complete sequence of what is the end, how it is going to reach the endpoint. Okay. So there are okay. no uh, the, this kind of situation not arise. Should not happen again. You see it in Kashmir. It's delivered right in front of you. Now, when they made a government with PDP in Kashmir, there was chaos. You could start complaining. Criticism. What are you doing? Yeah, this and that. You are you are making government with the separatists. These people don't realize that the Modi Shah duo works on root cause treatment, and it's going to be painful and long term. Okay. Okay. So you have to face it. So that with the PDP government. They got to understand how this entire terror factory works within the state, from outside the state, how the funding operates. And when the right time came, they just pulled the rag and removed 370. There was not a single drop of blood spilled on the street. So if you want, I'm not saying the similar thing will happen with Bengal, but what I'm saying is if you don't want massive chaos, then you can't be continuously doing this patchwork of giving solutions to the symptoms. It has to be root cause treatment. Okay. So the prime minister, I'm, I'm telling you, the prime minister and the government is totally aware of what kind of adversities are going on. Uh, they do have sympathy, but they want permanent solution. Okay. So when the action will come, they will have the entire sequence of what happens what needs to happen next, 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 until there's a permanent end to this. Got it, got it. Which is why one, one very big geopolitical, I mean, people might not know this viewers. Uh, this was the first time uh, the Bhartiya governance has been able to align 
China and Russia and UK and the US also. No, to um, ensure the win of Sheikh Hasina in Bangladesh. Okay. And the US also, I will complete it. The US uh, it wasn't uh, aligned. To okay. Because bringing no. Hasina government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Mm. This is the first time. So, Rishi Sunak, I mean, whatever that, I mean, I just read body language, which is why I'm saying. Mm. Uh, the way he was sitting down and Hasina government was, Hasina was on, lady was on the seat in the G20 summit. My understanding was uh, UK did at least help out with non-interference. Okay. Along, along, uh, okay. along with the US because they both were interfering in the Bangladesh elections. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, which is why I wrote that tweet the day Asina G won in Bangladesh. I said the state of West Bengal needs to thank UK and China. <laughs> so there are multiple things over here in play because there is going to be a spillover impact of what you do in West Bengal in Bangladesh. Exactly. And you need that governance continuing if you are to do a permanent repair work over here. But uh, absolutely activity. Uh, Shaji, so uh, finally South, uh, so the first part, South uh, especially, and which has around 130 to 40 seats actually. Mm -hmm. So combined with Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and uh, Kerala. So what is your prediction on this? And uh, so how is like BJP going to... Karnataka is going to be a huge number. Okay. Okay. Um, Kerala, it's not your anyways. So whatever opening that you get. Tamil Nadu, Andhra has worked excellent. So I would not rule out three to five seats. The percentages are very high. Like you have been seeing the uh, percentage which is given to the What are the polls saying? The it is, seats. Minimum they are predicting uh, 15 percentage with one, or, uh, with one or two seats. One so you are giving three to five seats. Three so five. yeah, so, so which we can uh, like, can we go with the percentage of the uh, uh, news agencies which are... Which are percentage speaking? would be little more if you are to win three to five seats. Okay. And that's a big, it's a big thing. Definitely, definitely. I, 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 I can understand you. that uh, sometimes people think a no of it, but no, that percentage is a big thing. Seats also. It's okay. a big thing. Okay, okay, okay. So these are the things and you are expecting 350 plus uh, uh, for, for, the, the BJP. For, the, uh, for the BJP and so what is the NDA's uh, uh, number? NDA can cross 400. NDA can cross 400.